Here it comes. Barbara, she's like butter, like butter. Hey Siri, pause. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. One of my favorite um, Christmas albums when I was growing up as a kid was, is, uh, has been, um, Barbara Streisand, Christmas. It reminds me, my mom would sing along, and I just have these memories, right? These memories of, oh gosh. Mm, don't wanna get emotional. My mom singing to Barbara the Christmas album, and it's just so good. My mom, they, their voices were very, very similar. I think my mom had a little nicer voice. You know, it's so interesting when it comes to looking back on past Christmases. Those are the only ones that are certain. Like, think about this. <laughs> History is the only thing that's certain, right? Uh, I mean, the future, death and taxes, got that, okay. But so much in our, in our hearts, we want certainty. And yet at the same time, we recognize this, this painful truth, powerful truth, is that the only certainty you and I will ever experience in our lives in so many ways is the certainty of the past. It's like, okay, that's done. That's how it went. It's written. That's, that's done. And when we look forward to the future, we have to be prepared for something else. We have to be prepared for uncertainty. And yet, what is the thing we love? We love certainty. Okay, what's, what's Christmas going to be like this year? What's this upcoming new year going to be like? What's the next, what, if I get this job, if I, if I marry this person, if we have these children, if we move to this place, what's the future hold? And what one of the things, one of the many things we want is we want it to be certain. And yet, the only thing that is certain in so many ways is the past the thing that's been written, which is one of the reasons I think we, we long for this so much. One of the reasons I listen to the Christmas albums of the past is because I'm like, I know those, and I, they're, they're done. I know what I like about them. I have memories with them, and there's something that's already set. It's done. It's over, and I don't have to worry about it. And yet, when it comes to the future, what do we do? We worry. When it comes to the future, um, we let the, we let the um, uh, lack of security of the future steal our joy. And yet it's Christmas. <laughs> and now we're in the season of Christmas, and this is the season of joy. How can we have joy in the midst of um, uncertainty? How can we have joy in the midst of not just, because I think a lot of times, what, what, what do we do? We look back on older Christmases, and that's where we find our joy. Hopefully you have, hopefully you have some, ble some, some blessings of memories, right? Hopefully you have some blessing of like the, you know, there were good Christmases in my life. That my whole life hasn't been awful, but hopefully you've had some blessing. And so we look back to those past moments, those moments of certainty. We, we know what they were. We can edit them in our minds too, right? We can, we can start uh, to kind of forget some of the pain. We can emphasize the, the positives. And yet if we're supposed to live joy right now, how can we do that? when we're left with uncertainty? I think the answer actually find, is found in the scripture. Um, here's our, our Great Adventure Bible. And in Luke chapter one, where uh, Mary uh, get, gets uh, the message from Gabriel. And the whole thing where Gabriel appears, imagine this moment, I don't even know how it went down. We, we have a little account of this, but like what it looked like, what it feel like for Mary. But here's Gabriel who says, um, you'll conceive in your womb and bear a son, you'll name him Jesus, etc." And Mary says, how this can this be? I have no relations with a man. And then Gabriel answers that. She has a clarifying question. Gabriel answers her clarifying question by saying, the power of the Most High will overshadow you and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your kinswoman, has also conceived a child in her old age. And it took six months for her who was once called barren. For God, nothing will be impossible. Here's the key line. Mary said, behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. The very next sentence, in Luke's gospel is, okay, so here's the Archangel, Archangel Gabriel announces huge, announces this huge thing. Mary has her clarifying question. Gabriel clarifies it. And then Mary says, yeah, let it be done to me according to your word. I'm, I'm, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. The very next line is, and the angel departed from her. <laughs> so now you realize Mary was left with, that's it. That, that, that's all you get to know. That uh, you'll conceive a child. He'll be the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The most power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, Son of God. And also, Elizabeth has a child, and she's six months pregnant. Mary says yes. And then she gets no more information. She gets no guarantees about the future. 
See, the, the, the next thing is all marked with uncertainty, marked with suffering. Like, it would be a whole different story if like Gabriel came to Mary and said, okay, listen, here's what could happen. You'll conceive in your womb. You're gonna go to uh, visit Elizabeth and it's gonna be great. Uh, she, John's gonna leap in her womb, it's gonna be amazing. And also, you're gonna tell Joseph, he's not gonna believe at first, but later on, I will come, appear to him in a dream and then he'll believe and so don't worry about that. But then you're, you're gonna have to go to Bethlehem um, when you're like nine months pregnant and you're gonna be worried about this. You won't even find a place to live, a place to stay, a place to give birth, but don't worry, it's gonna be fine. Um, I'll, I'll send a couple, three kings, you know, or a couple kings uh, to uh, bring you gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all these kind of, um, And then later on, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose him in the, in the, in the temple, you're losing him in Jerusalem, and you'll find him again. There's all these things that Gabriel could have told Mary to give her some certainty, to take away some of that pain, some of that like worry, some of that anxiety, and none of those things. She was only given what she needed to be given. And then one of those things she wasn't given was certainty. All she was given was basically this promise, God will be with you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. When Mary visits Elizabeth, again, this dangerous journey for a newly pregnant woman to make, but she does it with no guarantees. Now, later on, um, in the nativity, we just, that song, Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright, no. There is a king named Herod who is trying to kill the child you just gave birth to. There's, you, you are giving birth in a stable because there's no place for you to sleep. You have, there's no friends, there's no family, there's no home, there's no place of safety, there's no place of security. And yet this is the third joyful mystery marked by in, in, uh, um, uncertainty and marked by suffering. The fourth joyful mystery, what Mary, the uh, presentation of ch the child Jesus in the temple on the eighth day where he's circumcised. And what happens? Simeon takes the child in his arms and says, this child is destined, destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel and to be a sign of contradiction. And you yourself, Mary, a sword of sorrow will pierce your heart. And the joyful mystery, uncertainty, suffering. And then that fifth jo joyful mystery of the, the finding of Jesus in the temple. That's because he was lost. They found Jesus because he was lost for three days. Imagine losing God. The uncertainty of like, what is happening? What is going on? And yet, and yet, and yet, these are the five joyful mysteries. Why? Because in every moment, this whole way through, God is there. These are the joyful mysteries. Why? Because even though for those people, the people who are our heroes, that in the Old Testament, I mean, not Old Testament, but in the Testament, the New Testament, it's already written, it's history. So we can look back and say, oh wow, awesome, why? Because it's history and it's written and it's certain. But for them, they were living in it. They were living it and it wasn't certain. They were living it and it was uncertain. They were living it and it was marked by real life. Just like this Christmas, your Christmas right now. You might be going through a lot of suffering right now. You might be experiencing a lot, experiencing a lot of uncertainty right now. But joy can be present. Joy can be present because Christ is present. This is the entire gift of Christmas. Is that even in, the, in our worst day, even in our worst moments, even in the darkest of times, we can have joy because God is present. Even when things are most uncertain, we can have joy because God is there. Even when things are the bleakest and the most suffering. It looks like there's no way out. We can have joy because God is there. You get to have a Merry Christmas today, not because there's certainty and not because there's no suffering, but because there's Jesus. You might not have certainty and you might have suffering, but you and I, we've been given a savior who enters into the uncertainty. He enters into the suffering. And his presence can transform it. All of us here at Ascension Presents want to wish you a Merry Christmas. A Christmas that is filled. Filled with uncertainty. Maybe sometimes filled with suffering. But above all, filled with him. The Savior. Who brings joy to the world. God bless.